Hey, what's up YouTube? I'm Everett. And I'm Patrick. And today we got a very intricate range. It's gonna be a really awesome build that's combining so many different materials. We've got stainless steel Damascus. It's a challenge to work with, but the results are always worth it. Jade color pigment from Astro Dust. Several types of opal, green glow powder, and then we're gonna be setting an emerald into a gold bezel setting. It's gonna be complicated, but the results are definitely worth it. Let's get started. I'm really excited about the design of this ring. This is my own design and I've been wanting to make this ring for a while. First step, I'm gonna be drilling out the hole. To do this, I use a center drill. You gotta make sure that your speeds and feeds are right because this is so easy to burn up the tool. I use a bunch of coolant to keep the drill cool. This is really hard material, so I use a new carbide bit to get a clean and smooth cut. Next, we're gonna be boring out the hole. I use a 3 8 boring bar. Keeping the boring bar close to the tool holder, this will prevent shatter and make it easier to cut. Now that we got the inside, I'm turning the outside so both the inside and outside are true. Right now I'm parting off the ring. Parting is always super hard and with this material makes it even harder. Now we got that parted off. I'm putting this on the Patrick Adair Supplies ring mandrel. I'm using the calipers to scribe a line. This is where I'm gonna be cutting for the channel of the ring. You gotta be sure to cut a deep enough groove to inlay the stones. Right now I'm taking the ring over to the mill. I got it set up in the ring mandrel and a rotary table. I'm drilling out the hole for the gem. Cutting on a rounded surface, you always wanna make sure to use a center drill first. And then after that, I use a two millimeter drill and a four and a half millimeter drill to get the hole to size. For my glowstone mix, I used pine green opal, black emerald opal, some green pigment, and some green glow. Crushing up the stones, I want a consistency of medium to fine sand. This will be big enough to see chunks of opal, but also small enough that I can put it in this inlay and pack it. Don't mind me just putting in a ton of green pigment. Oops. All right, we're gonna retry that. Hey, 
I used a small piece of plastic to plug in the hole that we made for the gym. I'm putting some medium CA down on the base and then I'm gonna fill the whole base of the ring with some green pigment. Now I'm placing more AstroTech Medium CA and hand placing each stone. Kind of pour some opal in and then I move it around with the tweezers to get a good fit. Then I repeat the process until I filled up the whole inlay channel. Now I'm going to fill in all the voids with thin CA, then I'm going to sand down all the high points in the ring to get the inlay flush with the metal. After looking at the ring, I noticed there was some void, so I went and took a razor blade. I chipped out all those holes and, and then I inlaid more material. This process is long, but makes the ring look consistent and very well put together. Right now I'm gonna be cutting bevels on the ring. This is for comfort as well as looks. Cutting bevels on hard material like this, you wanna stop the lathe and then hand spin it just to make sure that you take all the chatter marks out of the ring. At this point it's already looking like a finished ring, but we're gonna do more. Right now I'm polishing the ring, getting it really shiny. Any scratch marks will be evident after I etch this, so I gotta get it really polished. I take it back to the mandrel to pop out the plastic plug. We're gonna chuck it up and get the ring to size. I'm shooting for a nine and a half, so I got about a half ring size to sand. Also, we're gonna be putting the comfort finish on it, making it really comfortable to wear. So we got the four millimeter emerald gem with the bezel setting. The bezel setting is a piece of gold tubing. When you place the gem in, there's a little overhang of gold and we crimp that over to hold the gem in place. So right now I'm hammering the bezel setting so it's crimping that gold in place. I use a microscope to make sure the gem is properly set and that it won't pop out.
I'm going to head on over to our Orion laser welder and I'm going to follow the edge of the gold bezel setting in the Damascus steel and bond them together. And for the final process, I'm going to be etching the ring. Luckily, all the materials I used in the inlay aren't going to be affected by the chemicals in the etching process. Let's pull this out of the acid and take a look at it. Well, there it is. The ring is finished. Yeah, Everett, I gotta say, I really love the way this turned out. It combines a lot of different materials, a lot of different design elements, but the end result looks really simple and really elegant. I love that. It took quite a while to make, but the results were worth it. But anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.